Okay, thanks very much, Yuri. Uh, okay, the, this, this presentation is already on the net. Uh, it's got uh, a fairly memorable uh, address. If you just go to slideshare.net and then under my, uh, my name, Alacri, and then Nordic OER. So you can get all the slides there. All the uh, links are clickable, and most of the pictures also lead to a link. So you can, and I'm sure they'll put that out in the conference documentation later. Uh, I don't know how quick you are in noting that link, but uh, I will change slide almost very, very soon. OK, I can put it up at the end. Otherwise. And I'm clicking. Do I click backwards or forwards? There. OK. Yesterday, I was very impressed hearing the opening speeches here, where um, we're hearing about the sort of uh, the new strategy and the idea of opening up in, in Estonian education. And uh, I'm very impressed that the government is taking an active role in actually creating a vision and a strategy for using open educational resources here in Estonia. And also the fact that you have national repositories for OER is also extremely impressive. I'm going to talk about what's going on in the Nordic region, uh, a massive region as you can see because it even includes Greenland where I was at a conference about three, year, three weeks ago and uh, the, questions, the same questions are being raised there as everywhere else. We maybe don't have quite the same level of commitment from our governments as you have here in Estonia with the exception of Finland but uh, we're on the move. Yes, my name, Alistair Creelman. As it suggests, I'm not, I may work in Sweden, but I'm Scottish and uh, moved to Sweden about 30, 31, 32 years ago. have lived in Finland as well. I can almost understand Estonian because I also speak Finnish and uh, picked up a wife in Finland as well, so I'm quite used to hearing that. Um, yeah, I do, I work at Linnaeus University with a general monitoring what's going on in the field of IT and learning and spreading that through blogs and Twitter and various social media, a lot of websites. I'm involved in um, many European and national projects, mostly in the field of OER, but also in e-learning quality. And I'm also a board member of the European Foundation for Quality in e-learning, FQL. What I'm going to do in the next few minutes is to guide you through a few of the sort of Nordic projects that are going on in OER uh, that I've been involved in in the last few years and raise a few issues that we've thought about and hopefully we'll get uh, a bit of dialogue going and you're welcome to ask questions when you want or afterwards. We've got the microphone ready. The first one I mentioned is what's been going on in Sweden <clears throat> and uh, this project called OER Sverige and there's a hashtag for Twitter for that as well. That's what the site looks like. This is a project that uh, has involved nine universities and it's been going for the last two years and actually it's continuing although the project itself is finished and the money has run out we keep it going anyway because we yeah we we <laughs> we're passionate about the idea of open learning so it's sort of it's it's continuing and we've got several spin-offs going the ideas behind the project the idea was really to create more collaboration in both the creation and the use of open educational resources. It followed on from a previous project which also lifted, tried to introduce these ideas. We need to talk to, the, talk to the teachers, talk to the leaders, try to justify why we should share resources at all and the need for collaboration, because one of the problems we see, and I'll come to very soon, is that everyone is doing it themselves, and we're creating little islands, and they're not being interconnected. So we need better methods to support teachers and to support students, because students create OER as well. The awareness of OER, actually the awareness amongst teachers is not high in Scandinavia. 
I would say in Finland is the, the gleaming exception because uh, with the cooperation now with you in Estonia and the idea of a cloud-based repository and a portal for OER, yeah, you're, they're, they're, they're up at the top of the development tree. The other countries in the Nordic area don't really have such a strong awareness of OER yet. So there's still a lot of, a lot of discussion, a lot of dissemination to be done. And we also want somehow to, that went a bit quick, to try and, um, hmm, try and uh, find, find ways of getting cooperation amongst libraries, especially university libraries, to find ways of tagging and using metadata to help the distribution of OER and the storage of OER. How can we get it all together? Is it, do we need to create more repositories or is it really about getting better tagging, better metadata so we can find the resources wherever they may be on the net? The way we did it was by means of webinars. And uh, what, one thing we do have in, in Sweden anyway is that all universities have the use of Adobe Connect which means that that has become the de facto uh, means of uh, video conferencing in the country. So every teacher at Swedish universities can have their own room in Adobe Connect and can use that for their teaching, for recording, and for making resources. So we decided to build on that, and we've offered a series of nine webinars, and these webinars, inv we tried to invite a broad spectrum of people from universities, but even from schools and adult education, from libraries, to discuss different aspects of OER. Quite good figures, actually. We had, uh, as you can see, a lot, of a lot of people registered, most of them participated, and a lot of them watched afterwards. So we've had, uh, we're very pleased with the spread of this and the fact that we, we reached out to many different groups. And each webinar focused on different aspects. We had uh, one where we had the two rectors from universities plus various other decision makers, and that attracted uh, mostly a sort of management uh, audience. We've had others which were much more for teachers, for inspiration. We've had about the uh, how libraries are, are working with OER. So this uh, webinar concept has been built on, and we actually recently even had a, a one about the future of learning management systems where we had... Uh, He's not here, but we had Mart Lanpere from the Tallinn University as a guest speaker. So we've tried to sort of reach out internationally as well. All of the webinars are recorded and available on the website, though um, most of them are in Swedish. There are about uh, there are two of the official ones and about six or seven other ones available in English, including the one that Mart was involved in. The biggest problem we've got with uh, OER is attitudes. It's not, tech, it's not really about the technology, it's about the attitudes. And I'll come to that in a minute when I talk about barriers. But I think the whole problem, I think the, the difficulty with IT and learning is in our heads. It's not about the technology, it's about how we feel about it and about traditions and breaking these traditions. And I can see, for example, in Sweden, we can see how the school world is adapting much better to IT and uh, education than the university world. The schools, there's a conference just now in Stockholm with about 2,000 teachers about the future of learning, and it's all about the use of ICT in schools, a massive interest. And on the university side, we're not able to attract that sort of audience at all for this issue. It's still very much uh, on, uh, still in, in development. So we've got a lot of attitudes to deal with. Another initiative that's grown out of that in many ways is called Nordic OER, and uh, we've called it the Nordic Alliance for Open Education, and there's a link there on the slideshow to that. Nordic OER started off really as a group of enthusiasts because really the, a lot of the OER movement is very much a grassroots movement. It's enthusiasts getting together. And we were a group of enthusiasts from nearly all the Nordic countries and territories. And we had some online meetings and we thought we've got to do something about this. And so we, we formed a network and we started looking around to see if somebody could give us some project money to give us a little bit to play with. And that's happened. 
We're still very much grassroots. We've got some very eminent researchers and uh, in, you know, some really, really top-level people involved, but we haven't really got that full impact with the top management yet, but it's coming. So we've, we've got a network of, of people which is expanding. We've got an actual project which is in operation. We've produced recommendations for the Im implementation of OER in seven Nordic languages. Uh, I think there's only one language, no, with two languages we need to fill in, that's Sami and Greenlandic, but we're on the case there. We hope to get that up soon, so you can read them in different languages. We've produced a position paper, which has been spread widely, showing how we feel about the implementation of OER and why it's important. And we cooperate with quite a number of other projects and the hashtag as well. One thing we've done in several Nordic countries is have interactive workshops. We've had them online and we've had them on site. And we've been looking at the barriers and opportunities to OER in the different countries. So we've had a workshop in Greenland, a workshop in Iceland, we've had one in Sweden, Finland, we're building on this and trying to do an inventory of, uh, of these factors and produce a report. One of the things we see is that there really are no national policies or incentives except in Finland. The other countries, just, it's just not an issue at the top level at the moment. And the, the, it, it varies from country to country. In Sweden, there is very little interest from the top at the moment, but we hope it can change soon. There's very low level of coordination between sectors at the moment. We see that uh, schools, or some schools are doing some excellent work, or schools in a certain region are doing some work, and the region next door, they're doing nothing. And then the, the same thing in adult education and vocational training, the same thing in, um, yeah, it's the same problem everywhere. They're not getting linked together, and that's really because there is no national policy. There's no real incentive. It's very much a lot of enthusiast islands. We don't really have a great culture of sharing yet, and uh, that was mentioned yesterday. I think we need, to, we, need to, we need much more active involvement. The universities need to, to get teachers talking about sharing, to make them feel that it's all right to share. We see that there's a lack of recognition that those who are sharing and those who are being open, they're not getting any rewards, they're, not getting, they're putting in a lot of extra work, but it doesn't give them anything in the end, uh, apart from the personal fulfillment. There need to be much more incentives to teachers to share. There's a suspicion of openness, and I think that also comes from the fact that it isn't blessed from above. I think a lot of teachers are a little bit suspicious of the whole movement, and they think, if I do this, am I breaking the law? Is this some kind of suspicious movement that I'm joining? Um, will my boss like it? Does the rector like it? And if, those, if the people with, if the decision makers give clear signals that this is all right, that this is going to be rewarded, I think again it will help to lift this into the mainstream. It's also very hard to find resources. And it's a little bit of a catch-22 situation because uh, a lot of teachers say, I can't find OER in Swedish. True because none of you have made any. And we've got to start making them before you can find them. They don't appear by magic. And we've got this little, we've got to get, we've, we've got to start doing it. And there just isn't enough in Swedish to give a, a sort of critical momentum so that people actually find really good resources in their own language. And it's even harder for people looking for OER in Icelandic, Faroese, Greenlandic, Sami, and so on, because there's virtually very, very little. So these are issues that we really have to address. We also need to look at uh, the opportunities and try to sell them. That we create a, cu a culture, I'll just click them all, a culture of openness and transparency. And the effects that can have on education. We need more, by sharing, we create new models for education. 
by co-creation, meaning making, students being involved in developing the resources that will be used on future courses, giving them a sense of empowerment. It also involves new publishing models. We have to discuss with the publishing companies how can we develop OER and at the same time Although the publishing houses will have to change their business models, we don't believe that business, there won't be a business model in this. There are opportunities, but everyone has to change. But we need to have these discussions, because otherwise it can be a conflict situation. I think there is a, we need a, a, a national or a common arena with the publishers, with the universities, with teachers and students to work out how can we benefit from the use of OER and not throw away the benefits of the commercially published and much much more high quality material that is also needed. We need a mix and we need a model that works for all, though it may not look like it does today. We need a quality focus. I see OER in a way as an opportunity for peer review for learning and teaching, because if you're able to put your resources on the net and other people, other teachers are able to try them out and use them and provide feedback, by rating each other's work, providing feedback, having a dialogue about learning objects, you're creating a, a peer review process. And we've got aspects of how OER can benefit learning and language and culture. For example, with small languages like the Sami language in the north of uh, Scandinavia, uh, by building up OER, by, having, by, having, by building up their own Wikipedia, by building up their own learning resources, they're, 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 they're empowering their own language. Suddenly their language has an encyclopedia that it never had before. Suddenly there's learning resources in that language. It has to be done by the people themselves. That's the position paper. I won't go into that in much detail. You can read it. It's perfect. It's Creative Commons. You can share it. You can uh, reuse it. You can add to it as you like. But it contains object goals, objectives, about the barriers, actions, and recommendations. We've also compiled a nice list of finding Nordic OER in all the different languages on that address, so you can search. Um, and that's the website as it is at the moment. And at the moment, this pre presentation is also on this, that site. Finally, a few words about Lang OER. Um, this is a European project that uh, started a few months ago. And it's about the use of OER in less used languages. And that includes Swedish, Norwegian, Finnish, Estonian, all languages that are in a way, smaller than the big ones, in a minute, smaller than English, French, Spanish, Italian, German, and so on. We're looking at the languages which don't have so much OER, and how to promote that, and how to promote uh, the more connection between them, because otherwise we're likely to drown in uh, English. And these are, you can read them yourselves, these are some of the project challenges facing this one. It's very much about not just linguistic, but cultural development. As I said, that languages need to find resources in, in their, with their own language from their own viewpoint. Using English open resources can be good, but it's even better if it's in the local language. We also have to talk about sustainability through OER reuse to help, maybe if we're going to have it, if there are English resources, it would be nice if they thought about reuse a little bit more and made it easy for people with other languages to reuse it, to give subtitles, to dub, and so on, to help people reuse that and not just in English. And we also, there are hope, there's hope that we're going to offer training to, to educators to, be, to actually start more projects. Estonian is a... a I think you're up and running already, but there are many countries in Europe and many languages in Europe that will need a bit of help. And there could be some cross-fertilization where the examples in Estonia could be then transferred to other countries. One first effect of this, of this is a uh, an international workshop on policy for OER and less used languages that's taking place at the end of the month in Oslo. And this is a, a very high level 
invited only group that are being invited to Oslo by uh, ICDE. And these are some major players in UNESCO, United Nations. There are top education ministers from all around the world and so on. And this is, a, this is going, to, it's going to be sent on the, on the net as well. But this invited, audience, this invited group are going to be discussing and trying to, trying to develop um, strategies and policy suggestions that can then be given to other countries. So it's part of it's also part of the uh, opening up education in the EU initiative, and uh, they are the three projects: Lang OER, Nordic OER, under the cover of ICDE, are working together. So that was a lot. It's time to hand over. These are my digital footprints. Is it Hans next? No. Nope. Any questions? That was a bit of a gallop. Andel küsimusi. Ahan, sul muidugi on. Uh, I think uh, one of the challenges for us in Estonia is that uh, we, do, we could have more collaboration between yeah. different open communities, like uh, open education activists, open source community, Wikipedia community, open data community, and so on. How is the situation in uh, Sweden? Do you have collaboration between open education community and these co other open communities? There are. I mean, the, the, the different communities, the different projects that I've mentioned have a lot of cooperation and we, we, we're turning up in the same arenas. Uh, there's also, I mean, we, Wikimedia Sweden are very active. They're trying to, they're, they're doing it, having a, trying to have a dialogue with every university and trying to get more activity, not, well, universities and schools, because one of the important things, people talk about Wikipedia, oh, it's not reliable. Well, if you don't think it's reliable, make it right. Isn't it our job to make it, I mean, we're the ones who write it. We can't, create. you know, the, the academics have to get into Wikipedia and write, if you don't like it, correct it. That's what it's there for. And uh, they're doing a lot of work, and we're co there's, a little, there's cooperation there. So there are, ma the, there are many communities, and we need to, in a way, the Nordic OER is trying to bring them into the same discussion. But we're not quite there yet, but I think the, we need to discuss more together, because otherwise there's an awful lot of little, small pressure groups that are not talking to each other. Kas on veel alaste järele küsimusi? Saalist. I will ask you a question then. Um, uh, what developments do you see in the near future in the scene of OER in, uh, in the Nordic countries? What, 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 what are the main um, steps or main activities that are, arise from these initiatives that you have just described? Well, I think it's beginning to come up on the agenda now. Uh, there, are, there are big differences between the different countries. I can see, I mean, Finland has already grasped the importance of this and is working with it. Norway is, is, is making interesting moves. It's beginning to come up onto the agenda. Denmark has a very uh, adventurous uh, policy about IT and schools and IT and education, and openness is part of that. Sweden is still not quite ready but um, there are signs that it's beginning to get through. I think we've got, the most important thing for all of us really is to get recognition from governments and to get the, uh, get the policy makers involved and to get them to realize what's going on. The, uh, the EU is opening up education in initiative, the uh, OER Paris declaration that UNESCO had last year or two years ago. Those are beginning to put pressure onto, onto governments to start thinking seriously about this. But uh, there's still a long way to go. I mean, in Iceland, there's, a, there's an attitude of, what do we need OER for? We've got the publisher who produces perfect literature for all the schools, and it works, so what's the problem? And there were, there's a discussion about how, how to change that. And uh, in very small countries, maybe they're quite happy with what's provided by the commercial the publishers. So, it's very it's difficult to generalize over the Nordic region, but we're hoping that uh, things like this summit meeting in uh, Oslo can have an effect. And uh, the Nordic Council, which is the sort of, they have a responsibility for the whole Nordic region with all the governments involved, they're beginning also to take this up as an importance. So I, I, many small movements, 
I think we have a lot to offer once we get moving. So, thank you very much. Yep.